is Ron Clark. Um, I want to talk today about the step 9 and 10 work with God forms and the four fundamental divine qualities. Uh, this arises from a friend who was asking about this. Uh, he's looking at that work uh, currently. And uh, so I responded to him, but it was all in little chat windows. <laughs> it was <laughs> all typing, and I really, really detest little chat windows and type uh, correspondence communication. I much prefer person-to-person, -person, you know, video chat or uh, in my little videos like this. So, uh, I wanted to elaborate for him, and uh, this is a good method for me to do that. And, you know, other people can uh, peek in on our conversation this way. Um, so, the subject is the step nine and step ten um, work with first uh, uh, imbuing the astral body with the four fundamental divine qualities and then building a relationship with one's personal personal God, personal deity. So, the first thing that really needs to be said here is that any God form is a human construct. It does not exist other than as a human construct. Um, in what we construct these images, um, these ideas, these conceptualizations, merely and solely for the purpose of personalizing our communication with them. It's one of the easiest ways for the human awareness to connect with these broader universal uh, concepts and forces that do exist, but our human constructs are human. <laughs> we make them ourselves. Um, they do not exist outside of what we make them. And that's... Uh, that's sort of a double-edged sword. <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, humans do really awful things in the name of their God. Um which is just a human construct. Um, but the other side of that uh, double-edged sword is that it's a very good way for us to connect with the divine, you know, with these broader, infinite um, forces that exist, that are our universe. Um, so... I suggest that it is approached with this in mind, that you are constructing whatever God you want to communicate with. Um, it doesn't have to be a God. Um, you can work with just the raw concepts themselves, as in the four fundamental divine qualities. Still, this is a human construct. Even if it's just for, you know, fundamental divine qualities, that's still a human construct. So we're trying to grasp at these universal things with our limited human awareness, okay? To do this work, you must have established what I described earlier as a quadrupolar awareness. This is the tripolar awareness, which we've exercised before, which is the physio astra mental awareness, where your physical body filled with an astral body and the mental awareness is moving everything and sensing everything through the astral and physical body, etc. So you're a mental body, an astral body, and a physical body all working together 
consciously, each consciously and intentionally in unison. Okay, that is, I think, starts in step six. Um, <clears throat> the quadrupolar awareness includes the eternal mental body, which in previous steps, uh, uh, step seven, I believe it is, um, or step eight, in there, uh, the communication with the personal guardian genius, uh, which I described as the greater self. This is one's own um, eternal mental body that exists in Bina. Okay? Um, I say one's own. Um, you don't own it. <laughs> you are a part of it. You and, you know, perhaps an infinite another infinite number of other individual selves are aspects of a specific greater self. Um, <clears throat> you must, for this work, be able to integrate all four of those bodies. So you must be able to raise your awareness to that of your guardian genius, your greater self, and integrate your greater self-awareness in your mental, astral, and physical self. It is the greater self-awareness that, that is capable of interacting with these broad universal forces that we are personifying uh, in these exercises. Um, it really is only the greater self-awareness that is capable of this, that is capable of bringing them down into and integrating them into the mental, astral, and physical bodies. Okay? So, you have to have this ability before you really... Um, can work with the personal deity uh, in the step 10 work. So this is refined in the step 9 work, the step 8 and step 9 work, um, especially the step 9 work, working with the four fundamental qualities. It's in this process that you... that you are naturally making this uh, intimate connection with your greater self. Because all of this, these di four divine fundamental qualities, um, are aspects of the greater self. That level of awareness, the eternal, infinite level of one's own awareness. So, the quadrupolar self is the self that creates the personal deity and interacts with the personal deity and eventually becomes the personal deity. It requires that integration of four aspects of self. Okay? Number one in this work is, this is like the final ego check in initiation in Hermetic. Uh, this has to refine the ego. There must not be an egotism in your approach. This isn't about making you the most powerful being in the universe. You're not going to become a god and be able to change everything at your whim. Uh, this is not about your whims. Um, so, you've got to deal with that. You've got to... Burn that up in the fire. It has to be the last trace of egotism in you that you offer up. You know, this is your sacrifice to uh, complete this work. Okay. And it's no sacrifice. Um, <clears throat> so, that's the number one uh, aim of this work. The second 
is to bring forth uh, the quality of reverence in your heart, in your being. Reverence is essential when confronting the vast universal forces and powers. There must be a reverence, not a supplication, but a reverence, a love and a deep affection um, for the universe. This is why, in initiation to Hermetics, this is an astral work. In both step 8 and step 9, there is some mental work too, but it is primarily an astral exercise um, <clears throat> in step 9, <clears throat> excuse me, step 9 and 10. In step 9, you're bringing the four fundamental qualities into your astral body. In other words, you have to experience this with passion, and that's where reverence comes in. Reverence is passionate. It's not weak. It's not mild. True reverence is passionate. <clears throat> Yes, when, when you sing their song to the divine, you're really singing it. Okay, it has to be passionate. It has to involve your whole astral being. It has to transform you completely at the astral level. The level of the ego. Okay, your personality has to transform in order to make this connection with the divine okay uh, and then in step 10 you're actually developing a relationship with your personal deity your personal God you want to make this a totally intimate passionate personal relationship that's why it's an astral exercise because there has to be a personal commitment. <clears throat> and it just has to be so sincere. Okay? No, no faking it. No theater. No acting. It has to be sincere. From the very root of your being. Okay? So, that's number two. Reverence. It's the first time, really, in initiation into Hermetics that uh, reverence is introduced. This worshipful sense of revering something so deeply. Um, okay. uh, next, the third thing that this work does is it, it hones your ability to interact personally and intimately with an abstract concept. Because no matter how concrete you uh, make this God that you are constructing for yourself, it's still behind it, these abstract concepts, these uh, concepts that are so far beyond logic um, <clears throat> that they're d d totally foreign to the human awareness. <laughs> and so we ha it's, this work will stretch and refine and hone um, your abilities to work with the truly abstract and to be able to do that comfortably, you know, um, to just... Well, okay, there's an abstract concept, I could deal with that and that one. You know, you just have to <clears throat> be nimble with your awareness in that sense. <clears throat> and the fourth thing that this work does in relation to initiation into hermetics, well, relation to the work of practice and magical evocation, and the key to the true Kabbalah and the other higher magics um, <clears throat> is the magical authority 
that Barden speaks of in KTQ. Uh, no, excuse me, in PME. The magical authority. And this is uh, acting as your God form. This personal God form that you work with, the goal is to so fully identify with it that you can then act as that personal God form. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think that's about all that I can really say about that aspect of initiation into hermetics. Good luck. It will be very challenging and very exciting. Very fulfilling. It's a really the final work of initiation into Hermetics, the ultimate goal of initiation into Hermetics. The rest is all child's play in, in comparison. Okay. All right. That's it for this time. Bye-bye.